let's talk today about two kind of important ideas, uh, midpoint and distance. So we're going to talk about midpoints and what they are ge or geometrically, and then we're going to talk about a formula to calculate midpoints, as well as finding the distance between two points. Now we've talked about distance in a previous section, uh, but that was distance on a number line. So if I was traveling horizontal or if I was traveling, traveling vertically. With distance, though, sometimes we can be traveling diagonally. And in that case, we can't just count from one point to the next. We have to actually use a formula, figure out kind of what's going on there. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the definition of a midpoint. So a midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So remember, in our previous discussion, congruent, in this case, would mean that the two segments have the same length. So midpoint is a point that lies directly in the middle, right in between two other points. So we're going to have the same length between the two points. So down below here, you can see that point B, right here, is called the midpoint of line segment AC. Now, what's, what's uh, going on in the picture then is you also notice these tick marks, these red tick marks that I'm covering over right now. When you see those little tick marks, we talked about that as well, that means the two pieces of the segment are exactly the same, meaning if they told me AB had a length of 10, BC would also have a length of 10. That means the entire length from A to C would be those two added together, or 20. Also then, if you're given something like this in a picture, knowing that that's a midpoint, they could also give you the entire length of the figure. So they could tell you A to C is 50. And then what that tells you is that each of those two pieces then has to be identical. So that means AB would have to be 25, BC would also be 25. So when they tell you something is a midpoint, they're telling you that that item is directly in between the other two points in the picture. So point B is in between A and C, right in the middle. Now with that, points are not the only thing that can cut segments in half. So there's also this idea of what we call a segment bisector. So we already talked about this definition on the previous slide. We can ignore that for right now. We're talking about the new thing. A segment bisector is any point, line, ray, or other segment. So really any geometric figure that cuts a segment in half. So it's going to intersect the segment at the midpoint. So we established on the last slide, these little tick marks tell me that point B has to be the midpoint because it's right in the middle between point A and point C. Now if we have a line, like in this case we have this line L here, if we have a line that passes through that midpoint, that line, which we're calling L, is a segment bisector of line segment AC. So it's a figure that's actually cutting it, the segment in half. You might also see pictures where you have your segment, we'll call it JK, and then they have a midpoint, call it M. So they're saying these two pieces are identical, and then they might have just a ray that comes off to one side. So then in this case, ray MN is a segment bisector. because it cuts line segment JK in half. So when you're looking at this, anytime anything cuts a segment in half, we would call that a segment bisector. And if it's just the point on its own, we can call that a midpoint as a special name. Now using midpoint, when they give me a figure and they tell me that I have a midpoint, so in this case they're telling me that point S is directly in between R and T. We know that because of these tick marks. It's telling us that that's what the, what's going on. Well, so we have two examples down here. Okay, so example number one tells us that RS has a length of 24. So we're saying this piece has a length of 24. They want us to find ST, so they want us to find this length here. And then they want us to find the entire length from R all the way to T. So in that case, all we have to do is understand what a midpoint is. Since the midpoint is directly in the middle, that means it cuts the segment in half. So if the left side RS is 24, 
the right side ST must also be 24. If those two pieces are 24 a piece, I can add them together and RT would have a length of 48. So in some cases, it's as simple as just kind of working with some numbers, knowing that the two pieces are identical, you can just set them equal to each other or add them up or whatever you need to do with that. Now in the second example, so number two here, they give us a little bit different information. We don't have actual numbers as much as expressions. So they're telling me RS has a length of 6x minus 7. ST has a length of 5x plus 1. They want us to find the entire length from R to T. So what we have to pay attention to is knowing S is a midpoint. That means this 6x minus 7 and this 5x plus 1 have to be the same. So they have to be identical to each other. So that means I can take 6x minus 7 and set it equal to 5x plus 1. And now we have an equation that we can solve for x. So we subtract 5x from both sides. We get x minus 7 is equal to 1. We can add the 7 to both sides. And we get x is equal to 8. Now, here's where we got to be careful. They didn't ask what x was. We wanted to find the length of r to t. So once we have x, we can't just simply stop. We have to take x and plug it back in to figure out what the lengths of the different pieces are. So if I want to find the length of rs, for instance, they said that was 6 times whatever x was. Well, we just found out that that was 8. So I can take 6 times 8 and then subtract 7. So all I do is take x and plug it in for x, or the 8, and plug it in for x, and now I can find the length of rs. So I take 6 times 8 is 48, minus 7 is 41. If rs is 41 units long, st must also be 41. So right now what we just found was rs and st are each 41 units long. If I add those two pieces together, rt has a total length of 82. So be really careful on these problems. Sometimes you're going to find x and be done. Other times they want the actual lengths, so make sure you remember to plug back in if that's necessary. Now, the next thing, these last two pieces here are going to be ones that we use a lot throughout the course of the year, midpoint and distance formulas. So when I want to find the midpoint between two points in a plane, so I'll have an x and a y for one point, an x and a y for a second. So here I'm given two points. The midpoint, and this is an important formula that you need to know. We take the average of the x and the average of the y. So we're going to add the two x's together, divide by 2. Add the two y's together, divide by 2. So anytime I'm trying to find midpoint, I'm going to be using this formula right here. So for this example at the bottom here, if I take the x values... So negative 2 plus 3, and then I'm going to take that result and divide by 2. I take the y's and add them together. So 5 plus 7, and then I'm going to divide by 2. So when I do that, I add the numbers first. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. Divided by 2 is 1 half. Then I do the y's. 5 plus 7 is 12 divided by 2 would be 6, and so I get my midpoint 1 half 6. Note how the answer is written. When we talk about points, we have the parentheses and the comma separating the x and the y coordinate. So it's important that you write your answers in that format when you're finding midpoint between two points. As a little more practice here, we have just another example. So we can plug in real quick here for the midpoint. I add the x's, 4 plus 2, and then I'm going to divide that by 2, and then add the y's, negative 3 plus 9, and divide by 2. So when I go to put the x and y in here, 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 would be 3, negative 3 plus 9 would be 6, divided by 2 would be 3. So we get a midpoint of positive 3, positive 3. So add the x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2, you've got your midpoint. Distance 
is a little bit more involved. So it's another thing where we have to know the formula. So here, when we want distance between two points, we have our formula. Now, the key here is understanding that when we ask for distance, notice they're just giving you these two points. Find the distance from point A to point B. We talked about the difference between line segment AB, which is not the same as the distance from A to B. When you have the two capital letters with no symbol, that's talking about distance. So in your homework or on a quiz or a test, when they ask you to find AB, or if they ask you to find JK, they're saying find the distance from one point to the other. So be really aware of that. And then it's a matter of plugging into the formula. Now, if you look at the formula, we're going to subtract the x-coordinates. And then once we subtract them, we're going to square them. We're going to subtract the y-coordinates, and then we're going to square it. We're going to add those results together, and then don't forget to take the square root at the end. A lot of times, kids will do the minus and square and add, and then forget the square root altogether. You have to make sure to do that square root at the end. So... Down below, we have an example. If I want to set up this distance formula here, I subtract the x's, and it doesn't matter what order you go in. So this says x2 minus x1, but I could do the first x minus the second. It doesn't matter what order. We're going to square that and then subtract the y's, 5 minus 7, and square. Now, to simplify this, we did this a little bit last week on our algebra review. So I start on the inside. I'm going to take the negative 2 minus 3 first and get negative 5. Squared is 25. Then I'm going to take 5 minus 7, which is negative 2. Squared would be 4. And so now I can take my 25 plus 4, and I get square root of 29, which I can leave because it's not a perfect square. Or I can write out the decimal form of it which in this case would be 5.4. So on these problems with the distance, if it's not a perfect square, you can go ahead and leave it in the radical, or you can go ahead and plug it in and get the decimal form. Either way is perfectly fine. So those would be my answers for the distance between those two points. One more quick example then, using the formula. So again, if I want the distance between the two points, I'm going to subtract the x's. Again, order doesn't matter, so 4 minus 2 squared, plus subtract the y's, negative 3 minus 9 squared. And now I start to simplify. So we did the subtraction first. 4 minus 2 is 2, squared is 4. Negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12, squared is 144. And then if I add those together, I get 148. So I have the square root of 148, which is not a perfect square. So I could plug it in my calculator and get the decimal answer of 12.2. So either of these two answers would be acceptable at this time. So with that, you should be able to complete your assignment for today, which is a worksheet, working with midpoint, working with segment bisectors, and then using the formulas that we just learned here. So you should be able to finish up or do any of the problems using the examples from the notes here. If you have any questions, again, make sure you email or ask for help in class.